Did you say what I thought I heard you say? The U.S. isn't processing passports? So Frank, what are we going to do when SHTF comes? You're seeing a relaxation of what people have been through in the last few months. And this is giving a lot of people a false sense of security. Uh, a false sense of things getting back to normal. Well, I'm, I'm in contact with a lot of diff people in different countries and different areas. I have a lot of contacts. Uh, not like thousands or anything, I'm just saying that I do have a variety uh, that my, my contacts aren't clustered in one area. It could be one here, one there, one there. And so I, I'm getting reports of pretty much similar or exactly the same measures being taken uh, in all these countries, even though they all have vastly different numbers uh, virus numbers that are reported you know obviously when we say that we mean what is actually being re what is reported which isn't necessarily the complete picture but a different conversation so um it's you know i'm seeing people on travel forums that are acting the same as they were um, before this pandemic hit. I mean, in other words, it's just something that happened and now it's uh, getting ready to be over and they're just gonna go on, you know, life goes on and they're going to do the same thing they were before. But actually things aren't as they were before because when you actually look into it, which a lot of people probably aren't doing. Now I know there's some of you that know what's going on. A lot of you do know what's going on. Those that have eyes to see and ears to hear know what's going on. You know, and then you have other people that don't know what's going on. I just see a lot of people making travel plans and they are not even aware that the country isn't even open yet to international flights. So they're talking about going here and going there. A lot of these countries are open to, say for example, in the European zone, you have an, an area. But the bottom line is that they're looking at it like this and this is regulations that are already in place. So this isn't, this isn't another thing. People think, oh, this is temporary, it'll blow over. It's temporary, it'll blow over. But what is temporary about a metal pole in the ground with a metal sign, like a, like a no parking sign, a metal no parking sign? Is that temporary? Is uh, painted spots where everybody's supposed, you know, they want you to stand painted on, on cement? Is that temporary? Is contact Tem tracing? Temporary is yellow cones. That, that's temporary. Mm -hmm. okay. Yellow lines. Good point. Uh, tape, taped off lines. That's temporary. Uh, these aren't temporary. So, um, and there's regulations. How do you, how do you put uh, regulations in place? And these are regulations that will be, they're there. In other words, it's law, you know. not oh hey we got to do this right now but we're not gonna cement this into a regulation no they've already cemented it into regulations the regulations are there and what they're saying is that they're not really going to allow travelers unless they're just passing through I mean as far as tourism in what they term as an emergency situation so um, as you've seen that an emergency situation can crop up unexpectedly and it is totally being disseminated by the channels that you that people get information from in other words people are used to 
say, watching TV or listening to certain people talk. And well, there's always what the authorities are saying. So those channels is where the pandemic is coming from. But if you, if you look at the real one-on-one -on -one situation, not the perceived situation, meaning I'm talking to you, you're not sick, I'm not sick, but we wear a mask because we're told we have to wear a mask. We're told we have to wear a mask to save other people or ourselves. And that's just not factual or true. It still seems to be rare that an asymptomatic person actually transmits onward to a secondary individual. And so these things are being done in such a way that they are not what's really happening. So people are still out there talking about making all these plans, not realizing that a lot of these countries when the next thing hits, which it will, and I've said this in other videos, um, I'm sure they're just, uh, you know, going to roll it out whenever it's it's. Well, we're expedient. going to talk about that in the, one of the next videos, hon, so don't talk about that right now. Okay, so whenever this rolls out, because this rolled out and it, you didn't know it was coming, and when it rolls out, it could be next month, next two, three months, next six months, next year, could be three, five years. But I imagine it'll roll out as quickly as they can get rolled out. Uh, people aren't going to, they're only going to be able to go back to the home of their passport. That, that's where they're going to be able to go or where they're resident. So, you know, this thing about traveling wherever you want, that's, that, you know, that's coming to a standstill. Okay. Um, the, the other thing about that is a lot of people are looking for where to go and uh, where to get away from all this, which is an understandable first knee-jerk reaction. It's it, the kind of knee-jerk reaction mindset of, of people, of someone that I understand doesn't have all of the information there is to know. And it's really difficult to have all of the informa information unless you have had eyes to see and ears to hear for a long time already and we are those people we've we've had that but I admit that we uh, became complacent and we went abroad um, thinking it was okay to become complacent so I'm just saying that a lot of people aren't really privy to what this the stage that has been set okay and the stage that have been has been set I'll give you an example in Panama the lockdown is still in force, and if you're, uh, you know, an American and a U.S. citizen, they won't let you leave, or any other citizen. I mean, nobody, nobody gets to leave. It's still lockdown, and you've got countries that are. Uh, I have acquaintances or friends in Argentina that went to Argentina six months ago, and they're still not allowed to leave. And they're not Argentinians; they're tourists. So, this is the situation that people don't realize that they're walking into and this this setup this situation that is coming about doesn't care about you it, it doesn't care about you so um, you know I mean uh, different countries are a little bit different however in comparison there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on in the US but when you look at what is actually happening abroad most of it is worse I mean, in a way that uh, worse, it's not the same as what's going on over there. You know, like it's not riots and, and protesting yet. There's protesters, but it's not violent. It's not violent protests uh, based on uh, anger. You know, I mean, yes, yes there is anger, uh, a lot of anger here in Italy uh, towards the measures that the government has taken. Um, and there's a lot of protests, but they're peaceful protests. So hopefully they'll they'll stay that way. Nobody, you know, we don't we don't want to see violence. Nobody wants mm -mm, to see violence. No. We don't promote uh, violence. Uh, we don't entice or encourage by vi you know violence. Um, you know, but we do encourage people to to get informed. Mm -hmm. And long story short, a lot of people are unaware, and I see an awful lot of that, especially all over the internet and it saddens me um, so regardless of what you you know what you may think or what your beliefs beliefs might be at this time going forward your beliefs are likely to change your beliefs will be become even more confirmed um, 
just continuing on the previous thought for example a lot of people are looking at videos on traveling going here going there and uh, so uh, in other news the US passport office is not uh, issuing passports so a lot of people are not even aware of that I'm sure a lot of them are and this is for security reasons because they don't want to do it by mail because of the shutdown that's what they say you know so that's the reason given and then there's those of us that are aware and know what's going on and realize that things are changing very fast and they're imminently going to be changing at any time to the point where life as we knew it uh, will no longer be there y you know I mean it, it just comes down to things aren't as simple as they seem I mean there are things that have already happened things that have already been implemented and things that are in the works that are going to change our lives dramatically just uh, a little bit at a time but fairly quickly so right now you're saying that because the whole world is about doing just about the same thing at this time we don't know where there is any place that you can unless you know you go out into the hills and the boonies and just yeah, there's, lay there's, low there's, there's no place to go on the internet that is misleading like there's uh, I'm not saying they're intentionally trying to mislead I'm just saying that um, videos are being made about oh come over here if you don't want to get a you know vaccine it's uh, you know but when you dig into it which is something I'm very good at because that's part of what our channels have been all about retire earlier retire better you know be super smart about doing your due diligence so when I go get to the bottom of things you find out that things aren't really as what we're being told there's a lot more to it and what I'm finding isn't nice it isn't fun it isn't acceptable uh, be very very careful of information that is just out in plain view because there's always uh, more to it than what you know what you're getting so preppers talk about shtf we don't talk about it too much but we we're prepared people and so where to go to be prepared well um, one thing that you want to be really focusing on is this first stage I call it a first stage for a reason for a good reason as I've said earlier a lot of the things that are being implemented are clearly not temporary and there's a reason for that right and so you can take a look at how the different countries have responded and this is a bit time consuming so I'll give it to you um, and I've already given you hints about places like Panama where Americans uh, and foreigners couldn't leave at and, all. There. And Argentina. And Argentina where they couldn't leave for months and months. Um, I have a friends there, that they're, they're stuck there till September. Uh, so, and who knows what's going to happen in September. So you can take a look at these places and what they're doing. And you, it tells you going forward what how harsh of measures you can expect from them and of course there's a narrative behind uh, some of these you know uh, you know big huge numbers and and this kind of thing well can you give us an example of what you mean by uh, some of these countries and how harsh they are you can tell that well, I've already mentioned Panama that people couldn't leave we've already mentioned Argentina you know uh, a lot of the uh, European countries even uh, wouldn't allow, a f are still not allowing international flights at all. And some of these countries didn't have any numbers to speak of, but very, very low. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of demonization of countries that uh, were lax uh, towards the narrative, uh, places like Sweden. And so we're seeing a lot of a demonization uh, in the press of some of these places so it makes you think about the future if perhaps some of these places are were a little bit lax this time but next time you know what could happen uh, under pressure of all this demonization because you see a disparity between the reporting 
you see people from Sweden telling, telling you everything's okay, you know. Anders Teno, its chief epidemiologist, and now a household name, who says the restrictions, such as they are, are working. This level of measures that we have in Sweden, there is no problem for us to keep it, keep it running for months. Closing schools, more stringent measures like that, closing borders. You cannot do that for months or years ahead. But uh, what we're doing in Sweden, we can continue to do for a long time. And I think that's going to prove to be very, very important in the long run. A new opinion poll suggests that Swedes support this light touch regulation in a country wedded to consensus politics, where people say they trust state experts. I think the most important thing here is to get people to actually follow recommendation, think for themselves to understand what the risks are uh, by social uh, interaction with people. So if people understand and follow that kind of uh, regulation and recommendation, I think we have the same results uh, as other countries do as well. Unlike its European neighbours, Sweden did not go into lockdown. Businesses and schools have remained open and people have been told to practice social distancing. The COVID-19 mortality rate is 38 per 100,000 population. That's one of the highest in the world. But it's lower than in some countries which have imposed lockdowns. The Swedish government has defended its policy, saying it's managed to slow down infections. Other countries will go that direction because they have to. It's not sustainable to close down economies, societies in the way that many countries have done. We have a higher level of immunity in the population compared to Denmark, Finland and, and uh, other countries, which means that when a second wave or a third wave from this virus hits the countries or the economies, Sweden will be better protected. But then you see these uh you know, you can call them fake news, demonization. Uh, you can, there's a lot of other things you can call them. Uh, articles talking about, uh, you know, how all these big numbers. And Excuse me, the, the Sweden health department person, spokesperson came out himself and said, I'm gonna take the health department person before the uh, fake news. Absolutely, but that doesn't stop them from putting out this false information. Oh this, yeah, this that narrative. was, yeah, you're right. And then with, with the news like that, then you got all the people that believe it. So you got all these people that read and believe and then comment and they take sides, you know? So where's that leading? I mean, uh, that's why I mentioned about like-minded people fortifying themselves with the unity of the brotherhood and the brotherhood of the king of kings and it's not about go here go there although there's a spot for that there, there is i'm not saying there isn't there's a place for maybe perceiving a little bit more safety absolutely but we don't know where that but is i'm not yet. saying it's a particular country i'm yeah, not saying it's a particular true. country i'm saying that within the areas that you are you know just kind of think for yourself and uh you know, understand what it would take to remain safe. You know, you've got people on the internet that are in countries that were under the World War II occupation and, and they, they know these kinds of, of things that they were under and, uh, you know, history repeats itself. So um, and I think that more than ever, it's really important now to become more self-sufficient. We were very self-sufficient and of course we went abroad. So the, the abroad thing uh, kind of erases and removes all of that self-sufficiency that we were using before because when you're abroad, you are becoming less self-sufficient. You actually travel abroad and I'm not saying go abroad, buy a property and become stationary and a homesteader. I'm saying, you know, live here for six months, live there for a couple of years, then selling everything and moving, that kind of thing. Um, it makes you less self-sufficient because uh, you're so, you're not so stationary, you're more uh, temporary. And it's just by default because you're moving, uh, everything you had before, uh, you know, goes away. So more than ever, it's important to become more self-sufficient and find like-minded 
people, you know, and that speak your language is very important. That's another thing about going abroad that during normal peaceful times, this is a great idea. But during these kinds of times, we're seeing some red flags and, you know, being out of your element with language, you know, and being a lot less self-sufficient or, or even not self-sufficient at all, you know, has its uh, drawbacks that we could talk about in a different video. So thank you for watching our video.